Okay, we are now approaching the end of chapter three and we have looked at all kinds of different ways of triggering events and having logic happen and we're having a lot of fun with it. But our player isn't dying yet and that's what we're going to focus on in this step. So let's get stuck in. So we're going to go back to our third person character and we've currently got a couple of events happening. We're going to create one more custom event which is going to be character death. I'm going to just going to right click here and we're going to call a custom event. So add custom event. I'm going to call this death and then we need to decide what we want to happen when we want the player to die. So the first thing we will want to happen when our character dies is disable character movement so that the player can no longer run around because that feels weird. So what we can do is get the character movement from up here. We're going to drag that down. And then if we drag out of here, we can type disable movement like that. Perfect. So that's the first thing that will happen on our custom event. The player will lose the ability to move the character. Now what we're going to do is we want the character to be able to ragdoll and it's not set up for that yet. So we're just going to go to mesh up here and we're going to scroll down and we're looking for the collisions section. So here's collisions here. And then we've got collision presets character mesh. And what I want to do is just change that to ragdoll. And that will just mean it will do what we want it to do when we simulate physics when the player dies. Uh, but we need to make that change for it to work. So now in our blueprint, we are going to want to set physics to true to allow the ragdolling to happen. So we are going to drag the mesh in like that. And then we're going to type set simulate physics. And we'd like that to become true. So I'm going to tick that box. And that's two things we've got happening. So the movement's going to be disabled and the physics are going to be enabled. So those are the first two components we need. Then we're going to want to have the game reset, but not immediately. We want the player to sort of realize that they've died first. So we're going to add a delay in. And a delay, I think, of about four seconds works for this. So we'll type four in there. Lovely. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to destroy the actor. So destroy actor. Now it's actually that that's going to be useful to us here because when we destroy the actor we've already got something that happens up here. It's going to reset the game. So we're basically going from there to up there. From there to there. Okay so that now is our little death sequence set up but there's nothing to make that happen yet is there? So nothing's going to trigger this and that needs to happen up here. So when the fire damage is happening we're going to find out whether or not we've hit zero. And if we have, we'll kill the player. So once we have done our 10 damage and we've printed it to screen, what we're going to do next is find out whether or not the damage is at zero, if the health is at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a branch. And I'm just going to disconnect from here for now. And we need to know what the condition is going to be, is the health at or below zero? So we're going to get the health like that. And we're going to drag out of that. And I'm going to type this, which is the less than symbol. And I'm going to choose less than or equal to. So if it is zero, essentially, because we've got equal in there or less than that, because sometimes you might have something that you forgot that takes your health below zero. So it's good to have less than or equal to. If it is less than or equal to zero, well, then in that case, we want it to kill the player, don't we? So from true, we're going to do death. Lovely. But if it's not true, then we want to keep taking health off. So from false, we're going to go back into there and have that continue to do its thing. So let's test that out and see if it works. So compile and save. I'm now going to run into the fire and then we'll wait for the health to come down. So it's on 20, 10, 0. And there we go, we die, we wait four seconds, it resets, and if we run back into the fire, you can see that it also resets our variables, so now the health is back up at 100, and we've got to bring that down again.
which is pretty good. So we've now got almost everything set up that we need. Perfect, right, let's make this look pretty. So I'm now just going to resize this again. So this is gonna be something that the player has to get around. I'm just gonna hide it in this corner over here. So we'll put that to about there. Let's go a little bit longer. Is there room for the player there? Yeah, I think it's still a little bit too tall. I want the player to be able to jump over this as well. So I think that's where the damage is gonna be for the fire. I'm also going to grab my key card and I'm gonna put that in the corner behind the fire. Lovely. Now we're gonna use some of the starter content to sort of dress this up a little bit. So if I go to content and start content, there's a blueprints folder and in that there is something called blueprint effect fire. I'm gonna drag that in and you will see, hopefully, that we have some fire going on. And what I'm gonna do now is just place this first one where I want it, which is gonna be about here. And then holding my Alt key, I'm going to create a few copies of it that go where my firebox is. How does that look? Mm, I think I missed one. Let's make sure I get this one over here. Perfect. And we've now got an obstacle for the player to get around. That looks pretty good. So if we now, yeah, nice. We can see that there's fire. The player can jump over it and not get any health taken off them if they want, or they can wander into it and start losing health. Perfect. So now that we've got the fire there doing the job of the collision box, we can make it so it's not visible in game. So we're gonna go back to our fire damage, click on the box and we'll turn hidden in game back on. Compile that, and then we'll play again. You can see now the key card is there. And how do we get to it? We're going to run and get it there. So now we can get out of the door, and we're all good. Lovely. Okay, now let's do the finishing touches. I'm going to add in, from this same folder, there's some smoke. I want this room to look smoky. So, sort of... About here, I think, is a good place to put it. And what I like to do with this is just scale it right up. Maybe that was too big. Let me just see what the details are for this. That's 10 times bigger. Let's go for about that. And this is just going to make the room feel smokier to the player as well. Let's maybe move it over that side a bit. And now, as we look around, you can see that the room feels a lot more like maybe the spaceship's just crashed up something. So that looks good. And then it also kind of hides the key card a bit. Maybe a bit too well. I'll let you be the judge of that. So that bit's done anyway. So we've now got our smoke in the room. We've also got our blueprint fire effect. And we've got our key card doing its thing. The final thing for the finishing touches is going to be commenting all of our logic up. So let's make sure that everything's done. So the door is done. The third person character isn't. So... This one is going to be, so C for a comment, uh, destroy and reset. This one is fire damage. And this one is death. Nice. Let's go into the key card and check that we've done everything there. I'm going to comment that up. Collect key card. And finally, for the fire damage, so we're going to do comment for this one. Take in what should we put? We'll put it in fire, and this one's going to be called out of fire like that. and then we will compile save all of those blueprints and save the level as well
Okay, so that pretty much brings us to the end of chapter three. The only thing left for you to do in the next step will be the challenge, if you're feeling up to it. So I will see you in the next video where you can put into practice some of what you've learned. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.